Hello and welcome to this video. We're finally going to start with Bibliometrics 3, uh, which is version 3 of the Bibliometrics package in our studio with our language for performing a scientometric and bibliometric analysis. Uh, this is how I started my literature review for my thesis and I would like to share it with you because it's a great, great tool to help you quickly look at the, um, let's say, uh, the great picture of science, uh, who are the prominent uh, authors, who are the researchers, which other institutes are working on this specific keyword that you're interested in, uh, and so on. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great tool for visualization. Uh, it's great for keyword uh, analysis, I will show you later. And uh, in this video, we we'll just start with bibliometrics package. So this is uh, bibliometrics.org. This is the website, uh, the original website for this package. In About Us, you will see that the curators of this package are uh, Massimo Aria and Corrado Cucarollo. And here they are. Thank you. Uh, the package is great if you are watching this video. Uh, so the second thing that I would like to show you is their paper. If you want to cite bibliometrics, you can use this paper and it's a great, great paper, very well written and you can learn uh, to work with the package, but also you actually learn about what is cytometric and what is bibliometric analysis. Uh, there are great explanations about different terms, different types of analysis. Yes, and also some, some very good graphs to show the capabilities of this package. This is how I myself learned how to work with the package. I started using it about two years ago and I'm not a scientometrician, but I started to learn about different terms and uh, the effect of metadata on your publication. And I understood the importance of metadata and I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos. So for now, we just I, I just show you how to uh, start with this package. Uh, another thing that you can use is to go to downloads package tutorials and here you have this web page where it's up uh, today is 8th of may and this package this this web page was updated two weeks three weeks ago almost on 16th of march and yes here the good thing about it is that you can see the codes and you can actually just copy and paste it um, considering that you're using your own uh, database and your own set of data then you can use these codes and you can also read the explanations to understand what's going on another source that you can use for learning bibliometrics is again through documents and read the actual man the official manual of the package it's again for april 16th i read the one that i think belonged to version one point something in November, probably 2018. I, I mean, 2018, I'm sure. 2018, I'm sure. But yeah, I think it was for November some, sometimes around that time. And you can see the codes. And even if you just go through the, uh, the first pages, you can see all the codes and explanations are written here. And you can build upon, not, not this one maybe, but you can build upon the other codes and you can use them to start your package. Uh, to download, uh, here is explanations about how to download R, how to download R Studio on the top of R, and then how to install the packages. I showed you, I, I have a video uh, that I showed you how to install and upgrade Bibliometrics package. You can go and watch it if you need help, but it's quite, quite easy. Uh, there are other videos in YouTube that you can watch and more importantly there is here the report template and if if you if you if you hit on this one it uh, gives you this web page that is that belongs to uh, July uh, 2018 so it's a, it could be that some stuffs are here that don't exist in the current version for example if you are already working with version 3 this code does not exist anymore, so you just directly uh, put the, the uh, put the address of your data into a variable and then use it to convert to the uh, version um, into to a data data frame. Anyway, 
Uh, another way that I wanted to show is again to go to package tutorials, template and the RMD. It's a small vignette and when you open it, it shows you this set of codes that you can just run. So wait, okay. So for example, if you look here, you just hit this small triangle and it runs the code for you. And there are other codes and a great deal of explanation that you can read to learn more about the terms and different types of analysis and what's going on. So the way that I envision this series of videos is that I start uh, by small, uh, sh uh, small short videos about how to work on and I will show you my own codes. So, to begin with, I usually update my code about when was the last time I started to use it uh, and I, when was the last time that I updated it. Uh, so today is 8th of May 2020 and uh, let, me bring up, let me bring up the console again. Okay, good. So first thing that you have to do is, uh, if you want, you can just keep a record of the codes that you're writing. Otherwise, you can jump to set your working directory either with the code set wd and then the address that you want to save everything inside that working directory, or you can just come to the files with these three dots. You can uh, search in your PC, and when you are to your destination, you just go through the cox, uh, go through the cox, sorry, and go sorry set as working directory. And once you set the folder as working directory, then uh, it's the same as running this code. So for now, I will just run this. Okay. Uh, great. So we start with the code. This is something that shows you the version of the code, that, uh, the version of the package that you're using. I go to the package tab here. And you can see that Bibliometrics is not loaded yet but it's a uh, version 2.3.2 that I'm using. So here a citation is to give attribution to the authors of the package. You can see more information. And uh, what does this code do? So library is when you have already installed a package inside uh, our studio. Uh, however, uh, when you install the package, it's not loaded every time. You can have thousands of packages and every time you need a package, you have to load it separately inside the environment. So with library, you either run it or you just tick this box and the package is loaded. Yes, these are extra packages that I'm going to load because I know that later I will use them in the uh, package, uh, sorry, in the coding. So to begin with, uh, I showed you last time how to download uh, metadata from Scopus and from Web of Science and uh, I checked it before starting this video and uh, almost all the records are duplicated so I'm just going to uh, stick with my uh, Scopus database and it's 51 database 51 records and yes we're going to load it okay how to start with first you have to read the files that contains your metadata. Uh, so the metadata that we downloaded was in bibtext format, which is .bib. And here is the address. The way that you write it is like this. So you, uh, you, you write the code, read files with capital F, and then you open the parentheses, then you open the quotation. Then you go to your destination where you know that the files are there. You copy the address here you paste and then now you have you need the name of the address so the, sorry you need the name of the uh, of the file here uh, you paste it one thing that is very important to remember is that every single backslash in our studio should be turned into forward slash for our studio to read it as an address where your files are saved here, you turn everything into forward slash and you put .bib at the end of your bibtext file. 
and then you write the code in R Studio. If you are an Apple beginner in R Studio, uh, this means this means equals, and it uh, let's say transfer everything that is on the right side and put it on the variable which is on the, uh, that is on the left. So here we have the variable D scope uh, as a short for as an acronym for scopers. And now what we do is that we uh, what we do is that we uh, convert or bib text format into a data frame format that is readable for uh, bibliometrics package. So now I have the variable m, and be careful here. I I show you one thing. Um, so when you put the question mark behind any command and you run the code. Uh, you receive information about that specific comment. So be careful because when you're using a Scopus, you have to write a Scopus in uh, quotation marks for the DB source, which is short for the database source. If you're using other sources, for example, Web of Science, you can use ISI or you can use WOS. And recently, I think in version 3, they also... Uh, accept dimensions and PubMed they, they used to they used to accept PubMed uh, publication so be careful that you have to change this if your database is not Scopus and also if your if the downloaded uh, metadata is not in bit text and instead in is for example in uh, plain text or CSV you write it here for Scopus the only possibility with bibliometrics is to download metadata as bib text and I think you can also read it somewhere here. Well I'm sure about this fact and <laughs> I don't know okay yes scopus especially in bib text yep okay so now we move forward if you have uh, several databases for example from web of science and scopus uh, this is the code that you use merge sources then mm, the data frames that you have already converted, remove duplicates, and then uh, put it in the variable m. Now, to the let's just sort of first thing in bibliometric and scientometric analysis. Here is the code result and biblio analysis. So this analyzes the document, and then what you can do is to read a summary of the results for the top 10 uh, entries. I run the code and now I extend my console and I show you what's there. So the information that we just received from uh, uh, analyzing the data is the number of documents, uh, sources, uh, authors, number of keywords, and type of documents, the years, and uh, yeah, so as I said in um, the videos that were related to downloading the metadata that I'm using right now in the previous videos, uh, the keywords that I search for are blockchain and building information modeling. So it's, it's a very, very new line of research and there are not many publications that has been published. And that's why you can see that the first publication or book or conference paper at least with respect to the keywords that we searched for are in 2017 um, yes for for learning more about it please go and watch those videos I won't explain it in details here then you can see the authors productive authors you can see top manuscript per citations which I think is very useful because you can go and if you're doing a, like a, a systematic literature review you can sort by reading these papers first because they have been cited over and over then you can see the countries you can see sources means either it's journal or it's a conference and yeah you can see the type of keywords that exist the next code that we're going to run is to plot all these results that we just saw this is the code for it plot X results and if you change it from 10 to another number uh, you will see for example the top 5 entry or the top five, 10 entry 
Now we go to the plot section. So we have average citation per year, which I guess it should be somewhere here. No, not the average, but the others over there. So for example, most productive countries is SCP means a single country publication and MCP means multiple country publication. And this goes back to the affiliation of the authors. And you again have this data here, as you can see. Uh, other tables are the most productive authors. And yes, that's it for now. Uh, I will show you also this extracting extra metadata. So let's take a look at our data. Our data is for everything that we have seen so far is here. So you can say that you can see that we have a a u t i for title a u for authors s o for sources g i for I think journal abbreviation if I'm not wrong um, actually if I'm wrong what we can do is to go here and we can take a look at exactly we can see different things so j i is our ISO source abbreviation so I was not wrong. Uh, D is, is keywords uh, that are chosen by the authors and ID is uh, chosen by is the, the keywords plus that are al algorithmic generated keywords based on the citations of uh, publications, AB abstract and CR is the cited references. So going back here, you can see all the information exists here and IU1 are uh, if I'm not wrong, IU1 means authors one uh, first sorry first authors uh, affiliation for university and yeah uh, this 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 belongs to I think other authors and PY is the year yes you can literally see everything that was in the metadata. Uh, another thing that I can show you is that if you open this data with a notepad, you can see that here are the information, abstract, affiliation, URL, and all of these are categorized and tabulized here. So, mm, back to our metadata extraction these if, if you want to continue with your analysis you need to run these codes and these are going to attach so crau here we don't have any crau so cr but no crau what we do is that we are going to extract and create extra columns that are based on the cited references and the authors, cited references and the sources, cited uh, authors and CO is country of affiliation and yes and these are uh, necessary for doing uh, different types of analysis I mm, kind of added them all together to M which is my data frame uh, yes you can see now we have CCR I use empty but you can see that now we have extra columns. Again, when the time comes, I will explain to you uh, if you need this information or not. For now, I would say that this video is finished. In the next video, I will show you author productivity over time. See you in the next video.